Uh, we actually have been, you know, to, uh, gaming a couple of days. We've been on them for a few days now, probably since last week, later on. And just, you know, we know that they're a team that likes to score and score the ball quick. So we know that off of, you know, misses, they like to get shots up more than, you know, half the time within 12 seconds or so. And I know a lot more as well on makes. So that's some of the things that we've been keying on, just getting back in transition, uh, picking the ball up early. I know they got a coach's son on their team. So, you know, he likes to uh, – we know he's going to like to get off a little bit and just, you know, try to put his numbers up. Bob? Um, Jalen, just how anxious are you guys to play a game in um, Mississippi Valley State, for whatever it's worth, Ken Palm has them, like, last in the nation. So, um, you know, now um, what do you think about that? I mean, to start, we're super excited, man. You know, with the season ended the way it did last year for everybody, you know, even the high school guys didn't get to really finish theirs out with their national tournaments and their state tournaments as well. So just for the guys coming back from the NCAA uh, that played college basketball, I should say, last year, it's just definitely great to get back out there. You know, you don't want to speak too soon. You know, it's like, is it really going to happen? Is it really going to happen the way Corona's been happening and stuff like that? You see and all these teams get it canceled. So it's just super exciting. And really, that's, you know, what was the second part of your question again? I'm uh, sorry. Like I say, Ken Palm, you know, the. Oh, uh, it's a faceless, it's a faceless opponent, man. You know, you're going to come out here and treat them like they're the number one team in the country the same way. Still come out, play as hard as we can and just try to stick to the scout report that the coaching staff has put together for us and don't treat them like they're anybody else than, you know, the next team on the schedule. And you, you've got a, a new teammate who played there last year, Kimbo, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I'm having a brain break here. But he Brandon Kimbo, uh, yes, he, he went there last year. Yeah, is he giving you guys a, a good scouting report on the players they have back? I mean, he's giving us a great look when practice on the scout team. And just, you know, the coaches have done a great job this week and last week even putting together the scouting report. You know, BK can help here and there where he can with them. But, you know, for the most part, that's their job. I guess one more, uh, and I'll turn it back over to Mike, if that's okay. What, what's, been, what's been your thoughts on playing with Desi Sills? He's really the – I know you got a ton of experience. A lot of the guys do, but Desi's the most experienced Razorback who's, mm -hmm. you know, been through the SEC and everything. What, what's your take on Desi and maybe how he's leading the team? Uh, Desi's doing a great job being a leader, man. Like you said, he is one of the only two returners from last year's team, two or three, I believe. So he's just been doing a great job of just showing us, like, the Razorback way, if, you know, that's how you want to put it, just the work ethic to be put forward and going hard on every single possession, trying to be that vocal leader and bring guys together and just trying to help the coaching staff out with all the new guys that we've had, along with myself and some of the older guys, just trying to continue to be a voice in some of the younger guys' ears and the guys that aren't as experienced. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Got it. Hey, Jay, I wanted to ask you about your – uh, what you thought of your personal progression, you know, throughout this preseason? Uh, throughout this preseason, I've been huge on the weight room, huge on trying to just put weight on, keep weight on, and just taking the next step as an all-around <laughs> player. So uh, when it comes to obviously catch and shoot, you know, shooting off the dribble, my jumper, I feel like it's come a long way. It's a lot more consistent. And just the trainers that I've been working with, the GAs here, along with the coaching staff at Arkansas, I've definitely seen a huge jump in progression as far as that goes. And just being a point guard, you know, leading the team, getting guys where they need to be in spots and getting guys the ball where they can be the most successful. So being that leader and just taking in all the information I can from the coaching staff, you know, they've been on the next level as well as this higher, you know, high major SEC. So they've been giving me a lot of feedback and I've been able to take that. And then with with K, and then with KK, you know when he's when he's playing his best ball, what is what is he bringing to the floor for you guys? He's bringing another guard. You know, I can move off to the two or the three, along with just pushing the pace. And he's learning how to lead a little bit too in his own ways. So he's able to you know call plays the same way, with or without coach. There, he's learning how to do that a little bit more and just being a voice. You know, getting us to spots, getting us into, you know whether it be a set on offense or making sure everybody's matched up on defense, just point guard duties. Nate? Uh, 
Israel. Defensively, has there been any adjustment for you playing, I guess, strictly all-man defense? Have you, is this the first time you've ever done that? No, nah, uh, my uh, first coaching staff, last year at NKU, we played a lot of matchup zones, zone-ish, you know, switching in and out. Uh, so that was just first year I've ever done that. My first coaching staff prior to NKU played all-man as well. So it's definitely cool getting back to it and taking on that challenge even more. But defensively, pretty much a lot of things are still the same. Thank you. Yes, sir. Alyssa. Hey, Jalen. Um, you know, last year, Eric Musselman played consistently about six, seven guys. There were two other guys that kind of played here and there. But when you look at the depth of this team, and has Eric Musselman kind of talked about you about what kind of number rotation you guys want to have uh, with your starting lineup and your bench lineup? I mean, ideally, I've seen – teams and especially with coach Musselman's programs you know you usually see seven eight but you talk about our depth and that's a great problem to have you know guys will be ready to step up on any given night so you know we're gonna have to just see how the season goes a little bit because you know you go through your ebbs and flows and guys battle adversity and stuff like that happens obviously you can't even you know you can't predetermine injuries and stuff like that hopefully our team just stays as healthy as we can but when it comes down to it, no, I haven't talked to coaches much about uh, how his numbers are going to look when it comes to the starting five and the guys coming off. But my, ideally, you think it's right around that seven, eight, maybe okay. nine range. Yeah, and then my last question just about Ethan Henderson. He's a guy who's been here as long as Desi has and has had flashes, um, you know, of, of good things but not consistent. What have you seen from Ethan Henderson and what you expect him to contribute this year? I see Ethan is just, you know, a great energy guy, super athletic man, arms go on forever. So it's great length and just, you know, just the focus level. I think he's starting to get it a little bit more as far as what we need from him, you know, and just trying to bring him every single day and have him be a guy that brings along everybody else with us is just going to definitely help us in the long run, especially when it comes to that depth. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Jalen, I think Coach Musselman was on a radio show this morning and said he still doesn't know who his starting lineup is going to be. What's the competition been like? And whenever none of the spots are kind of secured, does that kind of add to uh, practices and things? Uh, the competition is definitely fierce when it comes to practice. You know, guys are wanting to prove themselves. And obviously nobody ever wants to lose this on any, other, any team in practice. So that's one thing that goes with it and when it comes to those unsure spots you, you really got to bring it every single day when they don't know the starting lineup and you really want to be a starter because everybody wants to play a lot everybody wants to do big things for this team this year for this group for each other so that's definitely something that adds into practice every single day and you mentioned also uh earlier that you know you've seen some games across college basketball get postponed or canceled already is are you kind of like watching Twitter each day and just kind of holding your breath that, you know, your opponents and stuff are, are still going to be able to play against y'all? Well, all we can do is control what we can control, you know? So, like, just making sure my guys are doing what we can to stay COVID-free, you know? I mean, yes, you would love to sit there and be able to monitor every single team and see, like, whether or not they're going to be able to put the test together and have enough guys to travel. And I know with how COVID's been going lately, you know, if they got one or two guys with it, it seems like they're postponing games. So just trying to do what we can do on our side and keep that up, keep up our end of the spectrum. And hopefully, you know, as many games as we can, we can get out there and play. Jordan. Hey, Jalen, in the red-white game, I think you had eight assists, and I know that was kind of your um, claim to fame, if you will, at your last spot. Is that something you take pride in, being able to help out everyone on the floor? Well, as a point guard, you kind of do look to do that, but I'm blessed with the size and just the, the ability to see and get guys the ball when they're open and try to get them on time on target. And honestly, it's all credit to my teammates. They're making the shots, you know what I mean? I, a lot of the times, all I'm doing is just passing it. So just, you know, a credit to the work we put in and just the emphasis we put on sharing the ball, getting the ball moving from side to side. And on nights like that, you know, when everything's hidden, you can't call it a claim to fame, you know. But I'm just trying to do my job and what's best for to help the team. Nikki. 
Hey, Jalen, what, what challenge does Caleb Hunter present to you guys? Uh, just a guy that, you know, coming off a year where he was, I believe, all-conference freshman team, if not the year, I'm pretty sure. And I'm not sure about all-conference honors uh, alone, but I know he's a guy that – a high-volume guy. He gets up a lot of shots, and he's one of their – he's definitely probably their best player and just their leading scorer. So we got to do what we can to take him, you know, limit his shots and – limit his effect on the game. Russell? I'm good. Randy? Jalen, what do you see as the strength and weaknesses of your team? Uh, we have, when it comes to strengths, I think we have a lot of guys that can put the ball in the basket. Extremely unselfish team. I know we'll uh, connect defensively, you know. We have a lot of veterans as well as newcomers, but when it comes to defensive strategies and schemes and stuff like that, I think we do a pretty good job of picking it up in that sense and just the communication. I think some of the – if we ha if, if I had to name a weakness, it's just, you know, the lack of time having together. There are going to be teams this year that have eight, nine, ten returners in return X percent of their scoring that's going to jump off the page when you look at the numbers. So just, you know, having less time than you would usually have with the COVID, you know, with the whole pandemic and stuff like that, just being together. And I think we've had enough time to build that camaraderie and, you know, team building as far as just the impact we have on each other and playing together. But that could also be a fallback at the same time. Bob, final question for Jalen. Uh, Jalen, just wonder what you thought about Devontae Davis so far. Were you surprised or impressed or whatever that he won that dunk contest the other day? Uh, Devo, man, you never know a Devo. He comes out with a lot of surprises, man. You know, I wouldn't say I was surprised he would win the dunk contest. I know he's got some little springs on him, got pretty good athleticism. So, and you know he's got creativity through the roof, so I can't say I was completely surprised. But we've got some pretty good, you know, athletes in the dunk contest with Moses, Justin, and Ethan. He was kind of the dark horse, but once I saw him get up out there the first time, I said he had a pretty good chance. Thanks. No problem. Appreciate your time.